Mm. Autumn is in the air. The pumpkins are in the patch, and our friends at Manscaped are here to make sure you don't carve your pants pumpkins when you're grooming, if you know what I'm saying. Make sure you're keeping things fresh this fall with the leaders in male grooming and their brand new fourth generation performance package. Boys, get ready for a cuffing season like no other. Ready to take the leap into fall with Manscaped? Join the two million men worldwide using Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code DelphinPod, D-E-L-F-I-N-P-O-D. You'll get 20% off and free shipping with the code DelphinPod. Welcome to Countdown to Infinity, a Marvel's Avengers podcast. We talk all things Marvel, Cinematic Universe, and and MCU. Uh, M uh, uh, M M and MCU to (laughs) and you know what? Uh, MCU to you. Wow. (laughs) Okay. A Monday. Can you? uh, Can us? What? What are you trying to do? Oh, MCU. Okay. Yeah. We're. Um, uh, uh, We're. Mondays. Oh no, never mind. It doesn't no, it's work. it's too it late. Doesn't work. We've yeah. moved on. Yeah, we talk all things Marvel Cinematic Universe, the movies. Obviously, that's what our whole first season is. Right. We talked all of the characters from the films, and yep. then of course the films, and then of course other things. Mm-hmm. But we have been really for the last nine months been really honing in on these streaming shows. The series is from ser- WandaVision to Falcon and Winter Soldier. Series is Se- the series. It's the, just series. It's just series. Yeah. It's like series. moose. You don't oh, say mooses. There's no that's mooses. That's true. That's true. Okay, I see. I see. I see. I see. And you know what's crazy though? We, we what? started this in January, and WandaVision has won a couple Emmys. Yeah, they won Emmys. We just finished watching the Emmy show. Now WandaVision snubbed for some of the big stuff, like right, supporting right. actor and I'm, actress, and and mm-hmm, yeah. But mm-hmm. you know. But hey. But hey, they've won some of the arts. The Agatha all along won an Emmy. The yeah. song itself. Yeah. That's exciting. We knew we we knew it would. We knew it would because we, we would. couldn't stop singing it in our heads. Couldn't stop. Took but the internet by storm. Before we introduce ourselves, what uh, what do you think about the fact that we started this in January, talking about the first MCU show, and here we are tonight? They've won some Emmys already. Yeah. What, what a journey for Marvel in in TV, huh? Yeah. I mean, it. I mean, we saw how fantastic it was, and everybody was obviously like on board with them being nominated, and it wasn't really a surprise. The number of nominations that they got was, I think, well deserved. A whole lot. Just because Falcon it was, and Winter Soldier won, got yes. some uh, uh, nominations too. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, yeah, Marvel's come a long way, and I mean, it's not that unexpected to be honest, because we had talked and raved and ranted about how amazing the production value was and even seeing all of the behind the scenes stuff that they have on Disney Plus based on the series uh, series um film and the series like just all of it like it I mean I'm not surprised that they were nominated and that they won it was it's, great it's an honor just to be nominated I mean that too but it's even bigger not uh, it's a big I'm right now I'm gonna leave now okay bye it's a bigger honor to win yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I think that you know. Oh God, it's contagious. I know this stuttering. I know people love when podcasts when we hosts do that. stutter, but it's always great. I think to get some recognition, and especially when it comes to, you know, shows based on movies. That's kind of rare to have. You yeah. know, this sort of of like uh, prequels. Yeah, like prequels <laughs> and sequels, and they're all part of a universe. And I think that that's. Um, really fantastic that this show mm-hmm. was able to, uh, to 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 snag some of that Emmy gold, baby. And, and that they also just bring so much emotion behind it because it's not just a superhero show. Like, it's about emotions and grief and processing and just dealing with your own things. Like, there, it goes deeper just yeah. than the surface of, like, superhero superpowers, blah, blah, blah. And it looks like they've won three. They've won uh, some, uh, some costumes Emmy. I mean, of uh, course. Agatha All Along won an Emmy. Yeah. And then uh, production design, uh, yeah. which is, I mean, we talked about the production just, value I just already. talked about it, yeah. Fantastic. So yep. we'll have to see. And maybe, Congratulations. Hey, maybe Loki, maybe What If, maybe all of She-Hulk, maybe uh, what's coming up next uh, uh, Hawkeye. We'll have to see. Maybe it'll just be all MCU Emmys. Right. It'll be MCUE. Yeah. Mm. My name is Manuel. My name is Sophia. And although we're talking Emmys, we're not an awards pod. We're not talking pod. Emmys. We're not Emmys anymore. Yeah. It's over. It literally just ended. It, it literally over. just ended. Who yeah. cares anymore? <laughs> 
dumb. Um, no, I shouldn't have yelled dumb. <laughs> oh my god! But it's past now, and we're talking about what if, and we've been watching what, what if. if. And last week, John and Andrew wanted to talk zombies, so they were on that episode. What yes. if zombies? And now uh, Sophia's back to talk about episode six of What If. It's What If Killmonger Saved. Iron, Iron Man. Man. Uh, there's a lot here. A lot of it takes place in the Iron Man universe. A lot takes place in the in the Wakanda universe of yeah. Black Panther. What did you think of this episode? What if uh, Killmonger saved Iron Man? Um, I mean, I thought it made sense. Uh, I thought mm-hmm. good. I, All right. And I thought that it was just very fast. I mean, but again, it's just a short time span that the show needs to explain and that's kind of not unique to this right they've all been very they've been super fast that's what i'm saying like the yeah, show the show gosh. each show has been they just progress very very quickly um what i will say is it is very weird to see killmonger in such a such a i don't know what's happening sorry that was my phone <laughs> i was reading about the show and, and something popped up on my phone <laughs> But I will say it is kind of weird to see Killmonger alongside all of these incredibly important MCU characters and just I say I say weird but it's just frustrating because you know from the jump that it's Killmonger and it's just like okay like oh like it, it's just like pull it was like pulling my hair out the whole ep because like I knew that he was just being the worst person alive and it just really sucked to see him just take advantage of so many people but that is his character he's supposed to be that strong manipulative like really evil person and he definitely shows it here um I will say that uh t- I forgot how much of a jerk Tony can be <laughs> so seeing that sign was a, seeing that side of him again was just really um interesting and uh pepper of course is just amazing and it's it's crazy that again the women are the ones that are going to take charge um towards the end of this app so yeah i like that yeah i think that i think just as important as this episode focuses on killmonger's storyline it is also insane to think that without uh, tony stark being captured oh, yeah. in afghanistan he wouldn't ever become iron man right and he would never have that realization that uh, you know Stark Industry is mm-hmm. a is, is is a company manufacturing war machines basically. Would and, you? Yeah. What? Would you say that this is Killmonger's episode or that it's Tony's episode? Oh, this is a Killmonger episode for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I. But but I. Um. It's kind of one of the things that leads you to to believe that he is just consistently going. You know, Tony Stark is headed down a bad path in the first Iron Man. Mm-hmm. And without that incident and him changing, he would just continue going down. And here, right. you know, he parties, he's drinking all the time. Mm-hmm. He's very brash. And mm-hmm. uh, Eric Killmonger is able to, or, or I think his name is like Eric Stevens, if I'm not mistaken. But, mm-hmm. you know, Killmonger mm-hmm. is able to take advantage of that. And it is a very brilliant chess game that he plays in this. And, um, you know, he's able to create this narrative through a lot of murder, yeah. uh, the resources of Stark, and um, able to 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 take on Wakanda itself and make it a... Yeah, he still ends up there. Yeah, makes it a really, uh, like a confrontational relationship between the United States and and, and Wakanda. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, you know, one of the things about his character in Black Panther is, is that he isn't 100% evil in Black Panther. You really feel for him, and he's maybe one of the most sympathetic villains in the mcu so far because you see his dad die in the beginning right you see all the story his struggles Mm -hmm. his his identity crisis the fact that he feels like he grew up in a rough uh you know with a rough life when he's wakandan and you know technically wakanda had so many resources they could have saved everyone Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of resentment which is understandable Mm -hmm. from his point of view but Mm -hmm. it always feels like but it's how you deal with that resentment he's probably not doing it in the best way and the the ability to have all of Stark's re- resources, just all his available. stuff is Jarvis. really, really big because yeah. T'Challa is such a great foil and it is voiced by Chadwick Boseman, which yes. I'm excited about. I th- Me too. I, think John, I, was surpri- I was surprised to see that, to be honest. You know, John said he did six episodes. Wow. So we're not even done with with, oh, thank with hearing Chadwick Boseman's voice. But yeah, Michael you know, B. Jordan is actually in this. Yeah, he he's here too. I think John Favreau reprises. Don, Don Cheadle is back. Yeah. Um, uh, and then so is Andy Serkis. As, I will as say as the person Claw. The person that plays um, Tony or that is supposed to replace Robert is like insanely good. And the same with Pepper. I don't think that that's actually Pepper, no. It's not. But, yeah, it's man, good. She sounds it's not like Gwyneth Paltrow. She's too crazy. busy making her 
goop. making candles. Wait, she makes goop? Who she makes does. goop? She goop, does. right? She does. Yeah, yes, she's too right. busy making goop. Yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, crazy. It's it's really, it's. I think what's what's great still that's happening in What If, um, and again, like you may not, some people may not like this because I think some people are watching these shows and want to see a ton of new stuff, Yeah. which we're getting quite a bit of, you know, like you said, it's very fast, so it you're is. getting a lot of story, mm-hmm. plot happening all at once, but... They still are very reliant on those kind of motifs or those of the or those scenes or those winks uh-huh. towards the movies. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Like the same the set pieces. And yeah. then I mean like shot for shot yeah. things that happen the in the movie. Is exactly like, the intros yeah. are always but, I, and then, but it but it has to be like that though, just because of same lines too, like exact same lines, a, a wink at the audience. Yeah, I mean but it has to be like that because I mean you're reminded that this is just this is supposed to be just a branch off of a certain universe. So it's gonna be the same in some parts, right? Like yeah. it, like you have like you have to remember these are based off of actual characters that are in movies. In movies and like it just makes sense for it to be similar. It's it, it seems like this is a very um I, the T'Challa episode that we saw with the Ravagers right. and, and Thanos that was I think the, the most uplifting episode of 100%, what if. 100%. The yes. Doctor Strange was very dark, but this one also pretty dark, right? Yes. Like he gets his way at the well, end. He's a Black Panther. He mm-hmm. has a conversation with T'Challa and then it kind of ends with a cliffhanger uh, with Pepper Potts. And Shuri, but it's still a very dark episode, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think that that just surrounds the character that is the focus of the episode, which is a dark character. Like, either way, whenever you think about Killmonger, like, he's going to have a dark vision or, or dark or dark plan. Like, a, he's going to, because he's a he's a bad guy. Like, he want, all he wants to do is just gain power and do whatever it takes to get there and yeah. to take advantage of it until he gets to Wakanda and then he runs for her. I mean, we already know. Yeah. Um, and then I think the T'Challa episode where he's with, where he's Star-Lord, like I think that was so uplifting because of T'Challa's character because he just has that. He obviously would fix every problem he, ex- in, in the ex- universe exactly. in space. Yeah. Even in this episode, like he even has brings like this sense of like calm and serenity and like even has um, the presence of like almost like like a peacemaker at the uh, whenever he does run back into um, in the next Killmonger life, in the yeah. realm, yeah, because he's like, was it worth it? Like he's even trying to get him then to kind of think about everything that yeah. he's done. Never gives up. No, I, it, yeah, it's just his morals, I think, though. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, Don Cheadle dies in this uh, episode, or his character yeah. dies in this. Black Panther is killed in, in this. Uh, assumedly, Jarvis is wiped out as well. Tony Stark is killed by Killmonger. Literally it is. everybody. <laughs> But it is very similar to his character in the comic books who Killmonger. And we see his scars and there's a lot of them because he's killed a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it, he doesn't care, I no. guess. Like, it's anything to get he's, to what he needs. He wears it like it's so. a badge of honor. Every time, I, I think he, he even, like, told Tony, like, yeah, it was just for everybody I killed. Like, what's up? Like, it's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested, too, because there is this storyline in this where he has these drones that he makes. Yeah. Um, and he's a he, he seems to learn a lot lot from Tony Stark. I mean, it, it, this mm-hmm. his forte was never kind of the tech side of, of stuff and no. now it but seems it just, like he's 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 using a lot of that stuff too and um yeah, that's kind of devastating, especially since he's kind of playing the the United States as yeah. a pawn as well. I was going to say like he said that he went to college and that one of his thesis was in tech and yeah, that he wanted true. to build these robots like forever ago. Yeah. But I was like, yeah. "What?" Like did they, I don't do even you, remember them mentioning that from the from you, seeing him in the movie. Well, that that's like one of the pieces of information that's thrown at you very quickly and then yeah. in that scene Tony Stark says, "Yeah, let's build it." And then they uh-huh. build it like, okay. in like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it's a little jarring how fast things move in this and how they're not and you know I think we keep talking about that Chachala episode the earlier one because it's one of the best ones of the series yeah but that one is a heist so it kind of feels like it it it's not too quick does that yeah, make sense not- because it's supposed to it all just that it t- happens- takes place in one day. Well, yeah, I was about to say, you can't really compare a heist to something like this because this form of man- manipulation, even though it's perceived in our, in our, as in our, in our view, like as a very quick thing. Yeah. Like you have to, re- you have to think like how long would it actually take to manipulate Tony Stark? Like it's going to take like months and yeah. also like to build those little robots. <laughs> like that's, I say little robots. Yeah. But yeah. But they, but there is a lot of montages in this episode. Yeah. And I mean, of course there has to be because of his plan. Like it's going to take a long time for all of this to actually go down. Like this could very well be its own movie. 
Like yeah, if, I mean, they, if yeah. they actually expand on these scenes and if they get deeper into the story, like they could for sure make a whole movie out of this. Yeah, there's a lot of this that feels like it, it took takes place over maybe five years or something, <laughs> yeah. you know? And you're just getting vignettes, the most important parts, like mm-hmm. when uh, Tony Stark faces Killmonger yeah. or like whenever they, they he meets uh, T'Challa's parents. Like yeah. it's, it's just a very... A uh, fast thing, but then you're yeah. then they let you sit with some really big kind of I- iconic moments. There are a lot of cool fights in this, though. I do like, I do love actually the um, war scene between Wakanda and the U.S. and the drones. Yeah, yeah that's good. It, it's really really cool. Yeah, we get to see the Queen of Wakanda kind of take arms, something I don't think we see in the movies no. at all. Um, Killmonger fighting and riding one of those giant rhinos is really yeah. cool. It's I just love war scenes. I know, I know it's maybe I, yeah, messed up, that's right? Weird, but yeah, no, I get it. It's, it's, just, that, it's just because there's a lot of action. Yeah, in it. and they do that thing that everything like Lord of the Rings did this, Harry Potter did this, the Twilight movies did this, where both sides, you know, the good side that you're Run seeing towards each other. Well, yeah, but before before that, there's like this calm and this quiet of oh, like yeah. mystery, and they do it in Game of Thrones, where it's mm-hmm. just like one arrow flying in the air right. or something, mm-hmm. and then suddenly it's it just kicks off into high gear, yeah. and that's pretty effective. And especially since I wasn't even expecting anything to that scale mm-hmm. in this show, because this is maybe the one of the biggest episodes. Like, there's so much that happens in this, mm-hmm. and you're talking about Iron Man, one of the and Black Panther, some of the biggest. Some of the biggest heroes in the MCU. Iron Man was the first. Iron Man's the first. Black Panther is a pretty recent one. And, mm-hmm. and Killmonger. And, and, you know, this is kind of, you know, we know this happens in a different universe that the Watcher is just watching creepily. Yeah. You see him a lot more in this just being yeah, we creepy. We see, like, the whole Watcher here. <laughs> yeah, we watched you watch we watched Watcher. You, bro. But, uh, you know, uh, Michael B. Jordan is cast in mm-hmm. the next Black Panther uh, movie, Wakanda for ever interesting which is interesting because he died in the first one what do you what are you expecting from him like it do you think that there is maybe, some kind of redemption happening or uh, or not really i don't know about redemption but maybe like flashbacks or maybe like f- like references or like different scenes that could have him featured in it that are like Maybe some of it takes place in the past and it has to do with Michael yep. B. Jordan. I mean, I really don't know. Because he, you're right, he absolutely dies. So I don't see how... how he dies on that hill. I mean, that he, does, he does die on the, on the hill. And then also, I don't understand who would be so involved with him or want to bring him back in order for him to be revived if that makes sense yeah. like i don't know who would bring him back to life is and, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm interested in what the size of his role is i think you know one yeah. of the most interesting things about this show this episode and the movie is he does take the you know he he, he uh, takes he drinks from that that flower yeah. that lets him have the black panther powers and right. But he's still he, defeated. He, well, yeah, but he does that in the movies too. So even if he dies, he still exists in that realm mm. regardless. Yeah. You know, with T'Challa. So if it's a small role, I can see the next Black Panther, whoever it is, could be Shuri. You could see like him. in that in that plane of existence. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't see how he would be like a lead in the movie if he's always in that plane. So right. yeah, if someone revives him. Yeah, well, yeah, now he's like here. Yeah. He can fight. He can do I see. all that other stuff. But yeah. it's interesting because here we see him again. And he is a very popular and a re- very sympathetic villain. He's one of the people's favorite. Some people say he's the best villain in the MCU just because of just because his of backstory. his backstory and his his a lot of people actually relate to a lot of the, the feelings that he mm-hmm. has and, and kind of what. He yeah, does. I mean, I understand it, but like I said, it's just how he deals with his emotions. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. kind of taking a different approach than what I would take. Of course, <laughs> and he's always given opportunities to resolve things in a different way or mm-hmm. be a little more diplomatic. And I'm sure think, T'Challa gives him a ton of chances. Yeah, I just think he's just so manipulative, and he's very smart, and he's also like buff as hell. And he's buff he, as hell. Yeah, <laughs> and he knows he's very witty, and he knows how to defend himself. Like he's trained himself like crazy, and just like his combat skills are insane. Saying like, yeah, he is a great villain. Um, I will say that I did want to see that sympathetic side of him a little more, just because. But I again, I think it's just because this one, this episode, and and specifically, like, needs to move way quicker because of the time span that it's supposed to be covering. But um, I do wish that I saw like that side of him a little more in this episode because we just get glimpses of it, glimpses of it here, and I I did want to kind of dive deep on like what's actually driving his emotions and things like that. But, I mean, I guess like for those who have not seen 
Black Panther for those the, the little few that haven't seen it. Um, and then also like, I, is it me or did Shuri looks like she was like 11 or 12? Like she looked teeny tiny in this. She looks a lot younger in this <laughs> like, than I, I assume she does. I don't, know, does. Why, I don't yeah. know why she looks so tiny. <laughs> and there is also that cliffhanger that we kind of talked about. Um, but she knows that. She knows what's up. Yeah. And she's very suspicious the whole time. Even mm-hmm. up into the battle when she kind of is like, oh, you were right about what, you know, what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it is kind of. Uh, interesting that she is still suspicious enough to go to, to Pepper deep. Potts. Yeah. yeah, it's very very interesting. And then uh, you know, towards the end, we realize all of Stark industry is is taken over by the the, the military, right? Which and, and Admiral that Ross, was crazy. Which is, you know, kind How of crazy. How would that even happen? Like, I I don't. I feel like. Tony should or would have something in place for just in case of his death, like just in case of an emergency. Yeah. And he, well, he has no some... family. Well, yeah, but I mean, he could have left it to somebody. Like Pepper Potts. Pepper. Yeah, but who knows? This is this is with him never becoming Iron Man and never becoming nice. So yeah. he might have nothing in his will. And then the other thing is, I don't know if there was like a weird criticism because they 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 talk they they talk specifically about the patriot act which is this malign real life bill yeah that allows you know the government to surveil us mm-hmm. so i was like oh wow that's that's kind of casually kinda, thrown yeah. in there <laughs> yeah. to we'll kind of scare us i guess huh <laughs> that's that's pretty interesting but yeah. um who knows and, and i don't know do you so where we've it's kind of crazy to think but the first half we've only got three episodes left of mm-hmm. what if Oh my gosh! Already, already. Wow. Yeah, and okay. we've you know we've got the trailer for Hawkeye. There's stuff coming out. Right. Eternals is just like two weeks away from now, so mm-hmm. we're we're about to Spider-Man. get Spider Man. All and Spider Man is just months away, so yeah. we're gonna get a lot of MCU stuff. But what do you think about what if so far? And I guess do you think that they should continue some of these? Because a lot of these are you know standalone and kind of have cliffhangers at the end uh, some of them are really really sad but do you feel like you would like to see continuations of any of these specific what if scenarios oh i mean of course yeah like i would love to see a continuation of this just because i want to see what sherry and um pepper do with this information because i mean i want to see of course everybody wants to see i will i say everybody but i'm just speaking on behalf of myself i want to see killmonger get taken down like because this is a completely different level of power that he has now opposed to the actual movie like this is like trust on both ends and like how how would you stop somebody like that like it's it's insane especially because he's covered his tracks so well it's a bit frustrating but it's supposed to be like that's his character that's the whole point of it so i would love to see how they would take him down um and then what if so far like i said like each episode the only one that i'm kind of iffy about I w- well, of course, I would love to see T'Challa continued as Star Lord, just because that is just it's yeah. just so nice. I love that episode. It's probably my favorite one of so far. But um, I, I I don't necessarily want to see how Doctor Strange is doing, kind of in his Ooh, little just sad bubble, <laughs> his little spec. Thirty minutes of sad bubble. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, unless there is some sort of crazy hiccup yeah. for some reason, and he magically <laughs> is able to leave that little section that he's in. Like, I don't even know what to call it. It's just yeah. like a little dome of sadness. Um, but uh, maybe I would want to check on Peggy, see how she's kicking ass, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I think every episode has just been so quick. And the ending, the endings of these episodes are just kind of so, oh, I don't know, just abrupt. Like they just kind of end. Yeah. Like I'm not expecting them to end where they end. And then I hear... Um, the watcher's voice being like, and then, yeah. and then I'm like, because and a of lot of this. the, there's like an air of, el- I was like, what? There's like, an air it? of inevitability to a lot of stuff mm-hmm. in the one where all of the Avengers are being murdered by a crazy Hank Pym. Like it seems right. that the Avengers are still going to happen with right. Carol Danvers and the Hulk, um, yeah. uh, thanks to Nick Fury. But you know, there's there's some really weird inevitable ones too, like Marvel zombies, where there's a Thanos zombie, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, so, well that's yeah, well that's gonna suck. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> kind of wild. He's about to get the last stone. Um, and it, I I would really love, and I know this is they don't have to do this because so far all of these have been referencing the first three phases of the Marvel films. Right. A lot of movies that we've seen before, the oh. the OGs. You know, a lot of a lot of the uh, and there's 23 of them uh, to, to do. <laughs> but it would be really cool if they kind of 
stepped up the timeline a little bit. I'd love to see a Shang-Chi episode of What If. Damn. Or at least some uh, allusions to the Shang-Chi stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe the some Eternal stuff. Maybe some Black Widow stuff. Like, mm-hmm. that would be very cool and make it feel a little more current. Yeah. Um, because right now, it is nice. It's a good show to watch, to explore things, to, you know. But but so far, like, you're just like, this This is all good, like, one, one, one sheets, you know, of, of these stories. And it's really fun. It's really entertaining. Um, but I, I don't know. I kind of want to see some 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 really wild stuff. Yeah. Coming down. And, uh, and that's maybe why we love T'Challa's episodes so much. What combo, it's, it's so different. What combo would you do? What like, do you let's say, for instance, if you had an idea for Ooh. Black Widow, what would you have her do? What would the what if scenario be? Mm, maybe it'd be like, what if... Uh, th- what what if Black Widow j- uh, joined like, Hydra or something like that? Yeah, like what, you if, know? what if she never got out? Yeah, what if she stayed in in oh, in the Black shit. Widow then program? She would still be mm. an assassin, all crazy. Yeah, or what is uh uh oh man, what did the Captain Red? What what did, what did Black Widow's dad? What was the name of what Black Widow's dad? Oh, played oh, by David oh, Harbour. Oh, 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 I forgot. Yeah, his his name. Yeah, oh, but oh. what if the Red Baron or whatever his name was? What if he, uh, you know, still had all his powers and was kicking ass? Like that'd be right. cool. What if he still had a six what pack? If, no. What if? Yeah. What if he meets? Because he keeps asking about Captain America. What if he meets? Uh, you, you oh, know, what if he? What Captain if he? What if he defeated something? Captain America? Yeah, oh. like that would be cool. Oh. Look at this. We're giving free pitches. Right. Disney, We're, call us up. Call us up. Come on, Hit Disney. Us up, all right. <laughs> but I'm, and I'm sure that that's gonna happen. I just want it to happen sooner. It yeah. just feels like that may happen like 2025 or something, and mm-hmm. I won't even be alive by then. Can so you just? Gonna, Relax, sir. We're about Sorry. to get so many new movies. We just got Shang Chi. I like, know. Gosh, we're, we're about never to see happy. Eternals. Hey, Shang Chi's doing really well. It's it looks doing like it's fantastic. going to break uh, quite a few records. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on track right now to gross domestically more than Ant Man, wow. Ant Man and the Wasp, and Doctor Strange. Oof. And all those movies came out well before COVID restrictions. Right. So that's a really big sign for for Shang Chi. But uh-huh. hey, we've come to the end of this episode. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let us know what you thought about this episode, and then also uh, let us know what your scenarios is that, that, that you would want. But Sophia, what do you have to plug? Um, just the same old, same old stuff. Thank you so, 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 so much for listening to this pod. Um, please feel free to check out anything else under the Delphin Pod Network. We got some really cool shows that are doing really, really well. So, um, thank you so much for supporting us. And if you want to support us even further, feel free to check us out on Patreon. Everything's going to be at patreon.com slash Delphin Pod, D-E-L-F-I-N-P-O-D. And then if you want to, uh, follow me on any socials, you sure can. Everything's going to be at underscore simply Sophie, S-O-F-I-E-E. Yeah, go to patreon.com slash dolphin pod. There's a lot of stuff there that is, you can listen to well ahead of everywhere else. I think we still have an exclusive episode there where John, Andrew, and I talk about the Spider Man Far From Home trailer and all the stuff that we are excited about in the multiverse. And that's exclusive behind the paywall. Mm-hmm. Listen to all the other Delphin Pod shows. And hey, still rate and review the pod. I know it's been around a while, but yeah. still do that. If you haven't done it and you've been listening, do it, do it. Just go for it. What have you been waiting for? You've been listening so much. To lose, yeah. And then share with your friends. We have a lot of other fun stuff coming down the line, but we'll see you next week. Or I guess you'll hear us next week mm-hmm. for What If Episode 7. Uh, I can't even imagine what it'll be. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, we've seen so many different things. Uh, Maybe like a break. Hulk up? A Hulk up would be really cool. Or a Thor? Like Thor. just strictly Thor? We, don't, we haven't had like a straight up Captain Marvel app yet, but that's a kind of a big mm-hmm. one that, that we haven't seen. We've seen some Ant-Man, but we haven't seen like Paul Rudd Ant-Man Paul Rudd yet. Ant-Man. Uh-huh. That'll be big. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We saw Guardians. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'd be big. There's so many movies. <laughs> so All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.